Well, in here in lesson 26, our whole concept here is we're understanding this whole idea of inverse functions. And hopefully y'all have all read through the notes and everything, so you're ready for example one to hopefully make the notes just make a little bit more sense. But all we're trying to do is identify if a function does have an inverse, and if it does, what is the equation for that inverse? And the whole concept of two equations are inverses of each other, if their domains and ranges are swaps of each other, basically. And if they, if they, if when graphed, they reflect each other over the line y equals x. Okay, so in example one, does this function, first of all, have an inverse? And if it does, we want to find it. Okay, well, to check, let's just think about this equation for one second. Is If I wrote this line out, we would basically write it as y is equal to 3 fourths minus 1 half x. Well, that's in slope-intercept form, right? Both variables are to the first power. The slope is negative one-half. The y-intercept is three-fourths. So since this is line, a line, then I know for a fact it must pass the vertical line, or the horizontal line test. So I can just say passes the horizontal line test. And so because it passes the horizontal line test, then yes, it has to have an inverse. Okay? So now let's go to the steps of finding that inverse. Well, the rule says that what you do is you swap the x's and y's around. So instead of y equals 3 fourths minus 1 half x, it's going to be x equals 3 fourths minus 1 half x, or 1 half y. And then all we have to do is rearrange this for y. Well, I'm going to get rid of some of these fractions, first of all. So let's multiply everything through by 4 so we can eliminate the fractions. So 4x is equal to 4 and 4 will go away, so 3 minus and a half of 4 is 2. Okay, let's move that 3 over. So 4x minus 3 is equal to negative 2y. And let's divide off that negative 2 on both of those. So we basically get y is equal to, let's see, 4 divided by negative 2 would be a negative 2x plus 3 halves. And this right here is now that we've rearranged it, we swap the x's and y's, like swap the domain and range around, we have now an equation, and we're going to use that special notation that we mentioned above. That notation right there, f to the negative 1, it's read as f inverse. So this is a function of x, it's an inverse function of x, and it's negative 2x plus 3 halves. And that's all we had to do. The hard part is just checking whether it is. And worst comes to shove, always graph your equation. If it can pass that horizontal line test when you draw the graph, then you know for a fact to go ahead and definitely swap the x and y around in the equation and try to find an inverse function. Okay. So let's try this again with example number two. Again, in example two, they just want us to test to whether or not this function f of x, if it does have an inverse function. So can we find an f inverse of x? That's the question. Okay. And so the first thing we want to do to check to see if it, there is one is let's look at a graph. You know, if I did a basic square root graph, you know, you know, 0, 0, 1, 1, square root of 4 is finally up at 2. It curves like that, okay? So right now, that would pass the horizontal line test. And if we use our rules of transformations, this says that we want to take that graph and shift it left 3. So now it would be like that. And then we want to flip it over the x-axis. So now it's coming down like that. So does that look like something that can pass the horizontal line test? Definitely. So now we can take and go into the next step of finding what the inverse function is. Okay, We have y is equal to the negative square root of x plus 3. So to find the inverse then, it's going to be x is equal to the negative square root of y plus 3. Okay? And solving this for y, we want to get it out from underneath the radical. So what we're going to do to both sides is square both sides. So we get x squared is equal to Squaring a negative changes it to positive, and then the squaring of a square root goes away, and you get y plus 3. Well, to finish solving for y by itself, just move that 3 over. You can get x squared minus 3 equals y, or you can say y is obviously x squared minus 3, so we have it in the correct order. So in, in using inverse notation, you'll write it as f inverse of x is equal to x squared minus 3. Now, before we can call this done, though, we have a little stipulation on this one. Because what we have just found was the fact that, you know, a square root graph basically is half of a parabola. It was just this lower end right down here. And what we have just found is if I come up here and graph 
let's say the inverse one, then what I've got when I do that, you basically get a full parabola. And how can this full parabola be the inverse of only half of a parabola? Very good question, huh? Well, that's where that whole note was right before the last thing that was listed up there in your notes, before example one. It says that some of these you have to really test. You have to find the domain and range. Like, let's go to this main function right here before this one right here before we did any kind of the inverse part. The domain for that, by the time I took the parabola or the half parabola and I moved it left and then flipped it over, the domain was from negative 3 to positive infinity. It was all those values from negative 3 beyond. The range was from negative infinity up to 0, right? Okay, so what we have just discovered was the range here if I use my properties of inverse functions, this range is the same as the domain for our inverse function. So what it's saying is I really can't use this full parabola. I can use only half the parabola, specifically the parabola that's going from negative infinity to zero. Or specific, or if you want to, you, you can either write um, like our inverse function you can say for all those x values less than or equal to zero. But doesn't that include negative infinity up to zero? So that right there is really my inverse function. So let me go back and let me change this graph so you can really kind of see this. Okay. So I want you to see how it, they reflect each other across that line y equals x. So let me draw the graph. I know the square root one we already talked about. It was originally at the origin, and we moved it left, and then we moved it down. Let's see, one, two, three, four. So it came across kind of like that, okay? So that's our original function right there, f of x. Now our inverse function, we said it's only going to be that parabola where it crosses down there. The y-intercept is down there at negative 3, but we're only going to include it for x values below that. And so it's going to do this right here. Oops, so it's going to have a curve like that. And so if I draw the line in there, y equals x, uh, you're going to see, it's kind of not the best drawing possible, but it's because I was not all the scale and everything. But now you can see where a half parabola is inverse with another half parabola. Okay. And the key with that is just to know you have to go back and pull off your range from your original function to be the domain of your inverse function. Okay, so let's see if we can try this again with example three. If we again it's asking the same question, does the function f of x equal 4 minus x squared have an inverse? And if so, find the equation for it. All right, let's, let's think about a graph for this for just a second. 4 minus x squared. So obviously I've got a y intercept up there at 4 because when x is 0, y is 4. And if I plug in 1, 4 minus 1 squared is 3. If I plug in 2, 4 minus 2 squared is 0 negative 1 and negative 2 would give us the symmetric points. So the graph's coming down here like that and then coming down here like that. Well, does that pass the horizontal line test? Definitely not. So f of x does not have an inverse. And as a result, that's the answer. That's all we have to do with this problem because if it doesn't have an inverse, then how can we find it? Simple as that. Now, however, if they went up here and they tacked a little piece on there that said, does f of x equal 4 minus x squared when x is greater than or equal to 0 have an inverse? So in other words, if we were just looking at the right half of this parabola, then yes, it would have an inverse. Or if we were just looking at the left half, so all the x values less than 0, then it would have an inverse. But since it doesn't say a stipulation on that, then we don't have anything to worry about, and we can go on to the next example.